Hello everyone, back to day's second video. So busy old day at Gasworth in uh, today. We started off with the 8th winter 2019-2020 update. Another real epic, that one. The video is currently on the homepage at uh, gavsweatherviz.com and will be placed on the winter updates page later on uh, this evening with a written summary going over everything that we discuss in that eighth winter update. Uh, also, coming up later on, around an hour or so's time, we're going to have the um, third update for Christmas, the third Christmas 2019 written update, just for fun, and to get the Christmas updates page ready in preparation for the video Christmas countdown starting from the first day of November. So um, that'll be coming up, coming up for you in around an hour or so. It's time to be a live chat on YouTube as well between 5 and 6 o'clock. How am I going to find the time to do it all? I don't know. But uh, I'll get there, I promise you that. So um, this is the ECMWF. Metro France, uh, ECM, Metro France and DWD uh, long range update. We're going to go through the rest of the autumn into winter, just at the start of the spring, actually, with this. And uh, we're going to see what the uh, Metro France, DWD and um, ECM uh, long range models uh, uh, have got to say about whether for the next um few months uh very shortly i uh, just say we're at the copernicus website for this and you can find a link to copernicus.eu um on the links page at gas Webbies. right then so let's uh, get on we're going to start off with mean sea level pressure anomalies from metro france for november december january now this is just um, the first tri-monthly period, so it's the closest tri-monthly period, uh, if you like. This should be the most reliable part of uh, the update. So we'll look at the um, look at the mean cell pressure anomalies first, then the temperature and precipitation anomalies after that. So this is what Metro France is forecasting, uh, Metro France season model, is forecasting for November, December, January 2019, 2020. We can see it's going for high pressure to be centred from the Atlantic into much of Central and Southern Europe, and then just loads and loads of low pressure for all these blue colours up to the north. And what that does, it strengthens the zonal westerly flow. So we've got a very strong jet stream and zonal flow blasting across the Atlantic and into northern Europe. It looks unsettled, particularly for northern parts of the country, although most of the UK actually under the above average pressure, the higher pressure. So certainly down in the south, it's not particularly wet, I wouldn't have thought. But I reckon that it's indicating quite a strong jet stream. So at times it could be pretty stormy and you would expect wet and windy weather conditions at times with that. Then we go through to the next trimonthly period, which is actually the trimonthly period at four, the winter itself. This is December, January, February 2019, 2020. And uh, low pressure continues to be to our north, very low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, up into the Arctic. This is a really, really zonal winter that uh, the Metro France model is forecasting here. High pressure, strong ridge of high pressure from the Azores into much of Europe again. We've got this strong westerly jet stream. I mean, it can't be anything other than very mild, uh, this scenario. It's going to be pulling up winds from the middle of the Atlantic. It's going to be very mild. At times, I think, still stormy, although the Azores High is sitting there to our southwest. I would expect that at times it would be stormy, and particularly for northern parts of the country, uh, closest to um, those areas of low pressure to the north. So for northern Scotland, it could be really quite stormy indeed. And then no real change for the final trimonthly period, which takes us uh, through January, February and March too. So the above average heights or high pressure continues to be there from the Atlantic into much of uh, Europe. We still have the low pressure uh, within the northern latitude. So there's no northern blocking whatsoever. It's just continuous low pressure uh, to our north with the jet stream in that sort of position. Probably becomes a little bit less stormy as we get towards late winter as the temperature differential between sort of the middle of the Atlantic and the northern Atlantic of the uh, Arctic. That, that temperature differential will start to reduce, so it probably becomes less stormy. But overall, this is still very mild and uh, certainly for northern areas, probably quite wet or windy at times too. 
So these are the temperature anomalies we're looking for on the Metro France seasonal model uh, for the next three trimonthly periods, starting again with November, December, January. This should be the mildest part of, uh, this should be the most reliable part of all of this, I should say. So overall mild across most parts of Europe, no areas forecast to be below average, particularly mild or if not quite warm, actually, for Scandinavia and northern parts of uh, Russia. Temperature anomalies across the west of Europe, including the UK and Ireland, around half a degree above average. We go through to the next trimonthly period and it's staying mild or very mild. Um, so uh, again, quite widely, we have temperature anomalies of between half a degree and one to two degrees above average, particularly uh, warm and average in Scandinavia, northern, western parts of Russia. Ireland and the UK, we're going to around a degree above average. Not quite as mild down across uh, southern France, Spain and Portugal, closer to average there. Perhaps you're under the ridge of high pressure, so inversions galore probably down across Spain and France. And then we go through to the final trimonthly period for the Metro France temperature anomaly, which is January, February and March. And uh, this one, again, it's above average, really. It's a very mild period coming up, if this is right, particularly so for Scandinavia and northwest parts of Russia, but really all parts of Europe are looking milder uh, than average. The UK and Ireland, we're around half a degree to one degree above average, and nothing cold and average doing there whatsoever for any of the trimer peers anywhere in Europe. And then we've got the Metro France precipitation anomaly, again, for... Uh, November, December, January. So you see the very zonal nature of this period. It's significantly wet and average to the north. So for Scotland, up to Iceland, and then over to Scandinavia, very substantially above average with the rainfall. Many areas kind of 50 to 100 percent of average. Some places go up to 100 to 200 percent of average. Could be pretty decent for the Nordic ski resorts, I have to say, and also potentially at times anyway. Uh, the Scottish ski resorts. Going further south, we see it's dry on average across Spain and Portugal, so you can see where the high pressure is. High pressure is through all of these areas, where it's dry on average, low pressure is through all of these. And in between, of course, we've got this uh, jet stream raging away, racing in from off the Atlantic. No change for the trimonthly period for December, January, February. It continues to look uh, very dry down towards Spain and Portugal. So if you're watching this in Spain and you want a wet winter, um, doesn't look like you're going to get when if this is right. Very dry winter across Iberia, significantly above average rainfall to the north of the UK. And again, we've got that strong westerly, southwesterly jet stream blasting in from off the Atlantic in this very zonal scenario. And then the final trimonthly period for Metro France is January, February, March. Again, we're looking at above average precipitation to the north of the country, below average precipitation down to the southwest. Most parts of Europe uh, don't have much of a signal, but you'd expect much of southern Europe with this scenario to be dry and average. So all of these sort of areas you would expect to be pretty dry. All of these areas you would expect to be quite wet uh, and then in between of course that's where the jet stream is going to be coming through so at times it will be drier at times it will be wetter through those uh, sort of central parts of Europe but it's a very very zonal signal Moving on to ECM, yeah, so this is the mean sea level pressure anomaly from the ECM for November, December, January 2019-2020. This one again looks very uh, zonal and westerly, not quite as strong with that high pressure ridge to the south. So this is um, closer to us with the low pressure. This is more unsettled, if anything. The high pressure is kind of weaker and further south, the ridge from the Azores. And uh, so the jet stream is coming through like that. Could allow some cooler conditioning to the far north of the country at times, would have thought. But the main thing is that it's really, really unsettled. Very, very wet conditions would be expected with this and very westerly for the coming trimonthly period indeed. And that goes on into the next trimet period, which is December, January, February. So winter of 2019-2020 looks really unsettled again with the ECM. All of this blue around here is low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic. We've got this at ridge from through the Azores and into um, southern Europe. It's a bit further south as compared to where Metro France has it, though, which just means it's a, it's a uh, potentially more unsettled and stormier winter 
if anything. Still mild, though, still driving in across the Atlantic, just wetter and stormier through large parts of Ireland and the UK, perhaps. And then the final trimonthly period looks like that. It's January, February, March. No changes, really. Low pressure is still stuck around Iceland and Greenland. The only difference is that the ridge is kind of pulling more towards um, the east coast of America and Newfoundland, which may start to send a jet stream on a little bit more of the northwest southeast alignment. So what could start to happen then is that as the areas of low pressure come in from the North Atlantic, on their backsides, they might start to pull in some colder air from the north and northwest at times. So maybe later in the winter gets a bit colder via cold zonality, if you like, and the, and the jet stream aligning northwest to southeast, which is particularly good news uh, if you want some snow over Scottish mountains. Scottish ski resorts can do very, very well for snow from that. But otherwise, it's not a particularly cold signal because, of course, there is no um, no northern blocking. There's no high latitude blocking being seen whatsoever there uh, for the winter from, uh, from um, the ECM or Metro France either. Right, moving on to temperature anomaly. This is how it's looking from the ECM uh, for November, December, January. Again, it's a very mild signal through most parts of Europe. Significantly above average temperatures. Most places either sort of um, half a degree to two degrees above average. Very warm winter, really, through most parts of Europe. This is November, December, January, of course, so it's early winter. But it does look very, very mild there through all parts of Europe. Going through to the next trimethyl period, that one is also really substantially above average most places again sort of one to two degrees above average widely across central and northern europe island and the uk were around a degree above average most of the med is warmer than average absolutely no colder than average conditions uh on offer there whatsoever and then the final trimet beard is january february march we just see maybe a slight hint that the warmest anomalies to average are becoming more focused on this eastern side of Europe and in the west. It's still significantly mild on average, but just possibly beginning to lower temperature anomaly ever so slightly. But overall, this is a really mild winter being signalled here by both ECM and Metro France seasonal models. Precipitation anomalies, this is a difference in terms of rainfall from Metro France, which is restricting the wetter than average conditions to the north of Scotland, you see that actually with ECM, because the low pressures are lower in the um, Atlantic and they're affecting more of the northwest of Europe, therefore, we see that the precipitation anomaly for November, December, January is wetter than average through most of the UK and Ireland as well, and most of uh, Western France and Scandinavia too. So this is clearly showing that the low pressure is that bit further southwards, and uh, it does look as though it's a very wet three months to come. The next time after period looks even wetter. Look at that really wet signal. Uh, given that precipitation anomalies tend to be weaker than temperature anomalies, this is a very, very strong signal for much of northern and western Europe to have a very wet winter indeed. This is December, January, February. This is shades of 2013, 2014 with this substantially above average rainfall for the northwest of Europe. Notice no particular signal on the eastern side of Europe and the Mediterranean actually looks rather drier than average for this winter. And then finally, precipitation on is through January, February, March. They're still above average even now, even as yet to late winter, still above average with the rainfall precipitation anomaly in the northwest of Europe. Um, perhaps a little bit less so than the two preceding trimonthly periods. Again, possibly just hinting at that slight change to the northwest southeast alignment with projection, but pretty mild or very mild and wet winter being signaled out from the ECM. And then finally, we've got DWD, uh, which is the German model, uh, of course. So again, coming back to mean sea level pressure anomalies, this is how mean sea level pressure anomalies are look from the DWD uh, for November, December, January. A little bit different, uh, a little bit different compared to what we've seen so far in that we've got low pressure here, more from the central part of the Atlantic and moving into more sort of central southern parts of Europe. 
just ever such a slight hint of some higher pressure towards Scandinavia and ever such a slight hint of some higher pressure towards Greenland. That is a change on what the other two models are showing. Remember, all the other the other two models have those deep blue colours up here, intense sort of zonality. Uh, and intense areas of low pressure and, and a really strong polar vortex uh, as well. DWD is a bit different with that. It's not as high, it's not as low with the pressure, I should say, uh, over Greenland. And it does have lower pressure more through the Mid-Atlantic. So it would imply that the jet stream is probably down here. Let's get rid of those lines. It would imply the jet stream is probably coming through here. And it's a bit further southwards because... We've got higher pressure up here. It's not particularly high pressure. It's not a blocking seal reef because it's so weak. But it is enough to push the jet stream out a little bit further southwards, I think. So that's a change. It could be a little bit colder with that scenario. Then we go through to the next trimet period, which is for winter 2019-2020. Uh, it's going in a similar direction to Metro France and East Ham, but it's doing it rather half-heartedly. So the blue colours are coming back here. Uh, we have got an increasingly sort of low pressure signal within the northern latitudes. Still got a little bit of low pressure, though, to the south as well, which is quite unusual. And the region of the Azores is nowhere near as strong as the, uh, particularly Metro France has it. So there's a little bit of high pressure around the Azores, but nowhere near as strong. I would say that, again, could be slightly cooler uh, or even colder than the other two models uh, are showing. And then we finish up in January, February, March. And by this point, we do start then to get into a proper zonal sort of flow. So it's going in the same direction, DWD. It's just doing it slow, more slowly and more half-heartedly. So by the time we get through to the end of the winter, uh, then obviously we are strengthening the jet stream and we're returning into those westerlies, if you like. So low pressure is then starting to powering, uh, power in, I should say, from off the Atlantic. Let's see what all of that means with the temperature anomaly. Well, this is temperature anomaly from DWD for November, December, January. You'll notice it is nowhere near as warm as the other two models are at this point. And the reason for that is that the jet stream is further southward. So instead of all those red colours that we have uh, sort of in northern and central parts of Europe, all of this area, you remember, was, was coloured orange and red with the other two models. With DWD, it's much closer to average. It's in the white bracket, which is sort of no signal. It's not forecasting cold and average temperature anomalies, but it isn't anywhere near as strong with the above average temperature anomalies. The same is true for winter 2019, 2020 itself. So um, the significantly warmer than average temperature anomalies are, are uh, sort of um, focused on this extreme, let's see if we can change the colour, on this extreme east, northeast part of Europe around here. So that area does look... Uh, sort of a degree or more above average. But for the central and western parts of Europe, it isn't as warm, although Spain is above average. And then we go through to the next trimet period, which of course is the final trimetry period. And then we are reverting into that westerly flow. So at this point, it starts to warm up more widely across much of northern Europe. The above average temperature and normally signal gets stronger. But I do think that's a little bit cooler with DWD compared to the other two for particularly early and middle part of winter 2019, 2020. It's just a little bit more, just a little bit more wintry potential, I think, there for some northern parts of Europe compared to the other two. Finally, precipitation with the DWD. Well, again, you can see the difference compared to Metro France and ECM. The above average rainfall is more focused around here. So sort of going into Biscay, in towards Spain and south of France, you'll notice it's a bit drier than average, actually, to the north of Scotland and over towards Norway. A bit drier than average here, too. So it all tells us that it's likely to be more in way of higher pressure, not necessarily high pressure, but higher pressure around there with lower pressure through here. And that has the effect of sending the jet stream just that little bit further south. So nowhere near as wet, particularly as the ECM was showing for, no for November, December, January. Winter itself, 20, uh, January, February 2019, 2020, looks like that. It's getting rather uh, a very weak signal, really. It looks a little bit wet and average through some parts of southern France, but it is a bit wet of an average of west of Ireland as well. Could be shown that the jet stream is starting to rise 
a little bit further northwards, and then goes into the final tri-monthly period, which now, of course, it's reverting into that westerly scenario that the other two models have right from the get-go. So it does get there, the DWD, but it takes longer to get there and does it more half-heartedly. But eventually we get to January, February, March. It's wetter than average across the UK, above average precipitation across Scandinavia as well. That would be indicative of the jet stream sort of being pushed northwards in that sort of position by the end of the winter. So I think the main takeaway from this is that uh, obviously we've got the... Uh, Metro France and ECMWF looking very, very, very zonal. Indeed, they are both really strong westerly, uh, very zonal. There's differences between the two in that Metro France is stronger with the Azores high as it closer to us. So, therefore, it's a drier scenario and the wettest, stormy conditions are restricted to the north of Scott through this winter. Whereas the ECM just looks like an absolute Atlantic onslaught of low pressure would be an exceptionally wet winter, very mild winter, exceptionally wet. The DWD, though, is rather different, especially early on. It does look as though it has colder potential, sending the jet stream southwards with below pressure systems, particularly through early winter, possibly suggesting a bit of high pressure uh, across uh, the northern latitudes as well, not necessarily particularly strong blocking, but higher pressure up there. And so therefore, particularly early winter, the DWD could be colder. So if you're hoping for a cold December or a cold Christmas, the DWD may have something in there for you to pin your hopes on. It may do, but eventually it does get to that uh, westerly zonal signal by the end of the winter. So it just takes a lot longer to do it. So a real mixed bag uh, with these, but obviously the, the overall signal for this update is for a westerly zonal and mild winter, but there is the DWD to cling to, which particularly for early winter looks rather colder. Right, that's it for this update. We're going to be back in around an hour's time, no time to wait with your third... Um, your third written update for Christmas. Don't forget to check out the uh, the eighth winter 2019-2020 update. That video is currently on my own page at gasweathers.com and you'll be able to see that on the winter updates page with a written summary. Uh, probably after 8 o'clock this evening. I'll probably be a bit late with that. Because we've got the live stream to do on the Gas Weather's YouTube channel between 5 and 6 o'clock. We're discussing all of this, no doubt, and the winter updates too. That's all for now though, and thanks for watching.